Hey everybody, it looks like we're live now. Um, yeah, I decided to go live maybe about 20 seconds before uh, time was up. I hope it's okay. Um, so as I put in the comment section, you've probably seen that uh, today, oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you that uh, today is the, hold on, I don't want to make a mistake, but I am pretty sure it's mm -hmm, the 20th, yes, it's the 20th live uh, broadcast that we're doing. We started on, uh, well, just about mid-March, and we've been going, with the ex exception, I believe, of June 6th. I've been uh, with you, and I know that a lot of you have been with me, um, every Saturday at noon. So hi, I'm so happy you guys are here. Um, and I don't know, it's a coincidence, but today uh, it just so happens that most of my tools are going to be uh, German. Uh, I'm using one of my favorite erasers of all time is this uh, Stedler. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I sharpened it, so to say, meaning I erased and erased and erased on a piece of paper until I could get like this sort of pointy and sharp edge here. I don't really know if you can see, but it's uh, it's kind of necessary because I think today the eraser is going to be uh, a huge part of our drawing. All right, I'm going to try to keep up with uh, who is here uh, today. Okay. So it's going to be pencil, guys. Um, oh, right on, Anne. Put on some Rolling Stones for us, please. I would love that. That would be great because I can't play them because otherwise we're going to have a lot of uh, copyright infringement issues. I can guarantee you this. And I want this video to be able to stay up. So please play them for, for us. That would be great. All right. So um, hi, hi, hi. Jenny, you're here. I'm so happy. Jenny, you, you just posted today your complete 30 faces, 30 days uh, drawings, and I'm really impressed by how dedicated uh, you've been. I know a lot of you have been following 30 faces, 30 days for the month of July every single day. Uh, you've been better than me because there have been days where I haven't been able to draw, um, at least not following up with 30 faces and 30 days, which is a complete shame. But listen, if you go to a sketchy shop, you are going to be able to get 40% off any two classes. The promo goes on during the weekend. And I believe that if you look underneath this video, uh, you are going to see the details. Um, the code is cross hatching, and uh, you get 40% off any two classes or more. Did you see our... Um, a reference photo today, right there, Berenice. Um, quite a daring photo because it's surrounded with dark and then everything in the middle is fairly light. And we're going to try to, to focus on her face. And if we can, if we have enough time, we will fill in the dark all the way around, which will necessitate something more than an HB. But my tools today, okay, the first thing that I'm going to use is this. This is a graphite only. It's basically a stick of graphite by Faber-Castell. It's called PIT. You guys probably know those PIT, pit graphites. I've been using them quite a bit. But this is an HB. I usually use a, a 2B, a 6B, even a 9B of this particular sort. It's basically a stick of graphite with a little bit of plastic so that your hands don't get too messed up. So that's what I'm going to start with. And then if I want to go darker, if... I'm also going to use my Jumbo Faber-Castell, um, which is a 2B, because I don't want to go too dark. We'll see. Um, and one thing that's going to come in handy also, it's an eraser that is actually in a little stick like this that's very thin. Okay, this is from Paper Mate. I believe this is the only thing that is not German in my tools today, but otherwise I'm going to use this quote-unquote sharpened uh, eraser, right? So that's what I'm using, but honestly, I also already saw um, a Beata who was telling us, oh my gosh, I need to put away my 8B. No, you don't. Absolutely. Um, you don't have to. Please go dark if you want to. Okay, absolutely. All right. So I see that uh, 
a lot of people are here so hi okay oh I'm sorry okay so a little bit of a correction on the um, on the code I apologize I said that the code was cross hatching to get 40% off but it's actually SAS 40 if you want the 40% off discount any two classes at sketchy okay all right right on okay so by the way don't feel um, pressured to draw exactly at the same pace as I am going to this is not the point the point is to relax have a good time and try to produce something today okay something that doesn't suck too much because trust me guys I'm a little nervous today here's why this reference photo that you see here Berenice we've got obviously the upper side of the face but we have a majority of mask and part of the reason why I wanted to draw a mask um, we're getting some really interesting mask photos on sketchy you've noticed um, is because it gives us a great opportunity to practice folds and I've been really about drawing these folds lately. I really want to get my brains around how to do it. So I have a few um, tips about how to draw folds and what not to do with them. And that's what we're going to try to apply today. Hi, Rick. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and we're going to start. So, you know, part of the problem with uh, doing these uh, live flat on my desk is that I actually have the paper completely flat. If it were ideal, it would be up, uh, but then I need to stand in order not to make too many mistakes, okay? So if it's all right with you, I'm gonna stand. Oh my gosh, we've got Rick. We also have Dylan Sarah with us. Hi, Dylan, I'm so glad you could make it. Oh my gosh, your work, Dylan, has been fabulous. So, um, I'm starting slowly by just establishing some... You hear the sound of this uh, hard graphite on my, on my paper here? What kind of paper am I using? It's pretty simple. I don't know the brand. It comes from a, an old sketchbook. But it's one of those, um, you know, the, the paper has some holes and it's not super thick. But it's not exactly thin either, so it's really kind of um, a middle-of-the-road paper. It doesn't have much tooth, but just enough that it's going to grab some graphite. And uh, thank you, thank you uh, for appreciating the way I teach. I appreciate the fact that you guys uh, like it. This is great. All right, so again, just putting down some... Um, some basics here, okay? Stay with me. You know, these are gonna be her uh, eyebrows, but since I'm in HB, right, in this Faber-Castell uh, pit graphite, you can tell it's not brand new because you can barely tell that it says HB here, but it does. Um, what I love is that as you cover ground with it, like I'm doing right now here, I'm just blocking out some areas of dark. Um, you can really make some broad, broad strokes. I really like that. You see, they're going to go up this way. They're going here on the skin of the forehead. This is super, super um, preliminary right now, okay? And the reason why I'm standing is because uh, I don't want to lose sight of my proportions and the distortion and all the stuff that goes with it. All right, so this is where the mask is going to begin, right? And it's going to continue this way. I'm doing a very rough, rough sketch right now of where the, the mask is going to be. But there's going to be a line running across the mask, almost straight here. Just don't want to lose track of proportions. I know it may look very dark what I've just done here and it looks horrible, but bear with me. <laughs> okay. Oh, so glad you guys could make it today.
So there is more mask than there is uh, face in today's drawing. I don't know if you remember a little while back, I drew um, Rick uh, with a mask and it was a really amazing reference photo because that photo had a lot of contrast on that mask just like here. I really am a sucker for a black and white reference photo, guys. You know this, right? All right. So I've established my, my proportions more or less. I'm going to say that the, the mask comes up to here. But the reason why my eraser is going to come in handy is because, see, for example, right there, the skin and the mask almost blend together. So I'm not going to hesitate to use my eraser to adjust all those, you know, all these tricky uh, values. Okay, bear with me on that. It's going to be interesting. All right, so what I'd like to do, even though it doesn't exist on the, on the original photo, is draw a line in the middle of Berenice's face, sort of this way, so that I don't lose track of the middle, and also I don't lose track of where uh, the bridge of her nose is going to be, which is what is going to cause the mask to go this way. You see what I mean? Because underneath that mask, there is volume, right? There is a face. So I, I really don't want to lose track of that. All right. So my little eraser, my little tough stuff eraser uh, stick here is going to come in handy. So is my uh, Stettler here, um, which is old, but as I told you at the beginning, I sharpened it so that it would have that edge, you see? That little bit of, of edge here is going to allow me to do very neat little things. And because I'm in HB, that's part of why I'm doing HB today, because I'm in HB, I can erase and actually get uh, you know, some some really interesting lines. So hopefully this will go as well as I'm hoping it will. <laughs> All right, so let's determine where Berenice's hair is because there's also a gap between the hair and uh, the face, which creates a shadow. And that's pretty cool. All right. So all this... Well, this is fairly light, you know, where the hair works here. Uh, there's also, okay, at the edge right there where her eyebrow is, is where the sunglasses or glasses, I don't know why I assume they're sunglasses, glasses are going to be sitting. But um, this I can keep extremely sketchy here on top of her face because, um, oh, sorry, let's take a look, because really that's not the focus of what we're doing. I think the star of the show here today is the black and white and it's the folds on uh, Berenice's mask and for me okay that that's that's what I want to focus on today all right so I'm in HB guys you know that that means we're not going to go extremely dark but I'm going to try to achieve some some pretty intense uh, blockage so to say of light using my just the side you know, the side of my HB graphite here. I've had this, um, this sketchbook that I just tore a couple of pages off of today. I've had that for at least, I kid you not, 20 years. And because I never really finished, finish anything like finish sketchbooks, I just, I've always had pages. I'm almost at the end though. Oh, I just went a little too far with the... All right, so you see what's happening here? Just because I'm not going too dark, my erasers are allowing me to to get rid of that, that amount of graphite. It's kind of neat. Here I'm just working the shadow that is coming right up to her skin. You see? There. That, this is not hair. This is shadow from the hair onto the skin. <laughs> which is always so very cool to, to convey. My focus is never usually, oh, how well can I render this hair? Hair is there, yeah, but my, my main concern is 
can I convey the shadows from the hair to the skin? Okay, this is the part where I might have to do this. <laughs> hair rate. Why is it, this is a question that I want to raise here, why is it that most of the tools that I use, appliances, cars, um, pencils, always tend to be, are you ready, German or Japanese? German or Japanese. There's some French in there, yeah, I might have a few Comte, you know, that's about it. Uh, big pens, yes, French. But mostly my tools are... Japanese or German. I drive a German car. Before that I owned a bunch of Japanese cars and German cars. My very first car is German. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just the qualität. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Just, just one of those things. You know, when you when you trust, uh, trust a certain brand or a certain way, like Faber Castell is the way to go. Um, you don't really stray from that, right? I know I don't. Okay, so here's that shadow again on her on her forehead, right? Which is, it shouldn't be as neat as it is here. So I'm going to, you know, just kind of blend it here, just like that. And I'm still in HB, so. Even though I achieve some darkness, it's not very dark. It still stays very gray. I like that. Okay. Um, hey, no, Ute, did you know that Mont Blanc, even though it's a French name, it's a German brand? I know. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, the quality is really, is really what drives my... Uh, my purchases, you know. You want a reliable car, so Honda or Volkswagen for me. Not making any product placement here, just saying, you know, what I rely on. I learned to drive on a, on a Volkswagen Golf called the Rabbit here in the US. first generation, <sighs> which I bought for $450. It was a diesel rabbit. And that's why my email address is dieselrabbit at gmail. It's not a secret, it's on my Insta Instagram page. Okay, so you see now that I've darkened um, what is going to um, basically surround her face, um, I feel as though these areas are a lot less dark now, you see? Okay. So true, Jenny, absolutely, right? Yep. Oh, I'm just kind of reading your comments right now. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Even though Mont Blanc, the, the mountain itself, is in uh, technically in France, as you know, in the, in the French Alps, uh, Mont Blanc, the brand, I grew up thinking it was French, but it is actually German. And hence, yes, Ute, hence the Meisterstück name. Funny how that goes, huh? So I'm moving slowly, bear with me. Um, as I said before, we're gonna have more mask than we're gonna have a face. And that, that will create a, a really interesting challenge, I think. Because <laughs> I'm here for the challenge, guys.
Last week when I was drawing Rick's eyes with my fountain pen, I felt very much in my comfort zone. I felt like I, it was really just what I, maybe what I do best, I'm not sure, but definitely something that I am comfortable doing. And today, uh, much less so. <laughs> I mean, obviously, pencil is great, but what I'm about to do with the pencil here with those folds is still, um, you know, it's still a crapshoot. It can go in any direction. A bit of a gamble. This is my way of, uh, of preparing you for a possible catastrophic outcome. Why not? Okay, I'm about to place Berenice's eyes. Um, Sean, Michael, you're asking an excellent question. This is just a paper from um, a sketchbook that I had lying around. It's cream, it's not white. And as you can see, it's not super thin, it's not super thick. I wouldn't use that for watercolor, for instance at all, that, that would buckle right away, it's too thin, but it's great for uh, pencil and pen. It doesn't have much tooth, but just enough that it grabs um, my graphite in a way that it makes the HB really do um, do its thing, you know? So it's from a sketchbook. I don't have a brand on that old sketchbook, it's like 20 years old. Okay. Oh, Nikira, excellent question. So, Nikira, what I would do if I were you here on Procreate, I would go with the HB pencil brush or even push it to 6B to do the, the background, okay? But go with HB, which I believe is what Marcel um, is saying is his favorite brush. So, try that. And Nikira, I'd love to see what the, the results are. And yes, it's sketchbook paper, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Stina, is Sennelier French? I would gather it is. It sounds like a French brand, right? Sennelier? Yeah. Let's say it's French. Or is it one of those brands that uses a French name? I'm not sure. All right. So as I said a second ago, I'm going to try to place Berenice's eyes on uh, the paper now, going carefully. All right. So it looks as though this could be one here. I'm placing it kind of going with what I have already drawn and, you know, hoping it's not going to look too small or too big. There's an iris which is not completely round at the bottom, okay? It's got a little bit of a, of a cut because of the, yeah. The eyelid, you know? All right. And this here is dark, just like the iris is going to be fairly dark. Two. Okay, here comes the other eye. Keep in mind that when we draw eyes, we, we don't want symmetry. We just want them to look uh, like what we're looking at, okay? When we try to make things look symmetrical, you know, that's where we lose uh, the realism of, uh, of a face. Huh? I know that's been uh, the case. Okay. Sennelier. Okay. It's French and old. <laughs> Just like anything French. It's pretty old stuff. That's great. Sennelier is French. I don't think I own a single Sennelier brand uh, anything here. All right. Uh, what's going to happen at inside of uh, Berenice's eyes because we have a little bit of reflection. I'm going to clear up some of that uh, foundation that I put there, just enough so that those reflection in her eyes can, can show, okay? I'm going 
going to make them as realistic as possible. You know how much I love drawing eyes. I did not know Sennelier uh, created the first oil pastels. That's interesting. Here's a medium I've never ventured in uh, pastels. My goodness. Okay, there's a little bit of makeup uh, on, um, on Berenice's eyes, so I don't want to miss out on that. I'm trying to convey that. Oh my gosh, some seriously gorgeous eyes going on there. I didn't even notice when I first picked this, uh, this photo. Because of course, so focused was I on the uh, on the whole mask and the folds and all that that wow, but her eyes are great. Guys, did you see that Rick has a new? Um, has a new phone and now he's unstoppable. Not that he was stoppable before, but I don't know if you've seen his latest uh, photos, I guess taken with portrait mode, they're great. So I can't wait to uh, to get into those a little bit and see what, what I can do. Rick has a new phone. Did I read that in the New York Times today? <laughs> For me, it's important. Okay, how's everybody doing? Okay, I know some of you are working on um, on the iPad on Procreate. Uh, I'm going the old-fashioned way here, and I will certainly want to explore. Uh, how to do these folds, maybe with a little bit of cross hatching and and you know trying to show you what has worked for me in the past when drawing folds. Okay, here's the second eye. Doing a little bit of uh, a negative space here. And because I'm in HB, I'm really putting quite a bit of pressure to uh, to achieve the dark that I see in uh, in her eyes. Okay. All right. And it's going to get much darker here at the edges of Berenice's eyes. Take a look. One of the beauty of uh, the beauties of this. Uh, this kind of pencil I'm using, um, this graphite, this stick of graphite, is that it allows me to just do exactly what I'm doing now, which is uh, hold my graphite stick uh, a little more horizontally, and then just uh, be able to achieve these really broad strokes, lightly or not. You see right there, that helps. Okay. <laughs> Sean Michael, I appreciate the fact that you've chosen to, to join us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Dylan, you should check out uh, uh, Rick's new photos on, on Instagram. And of course, I'm, you know, I'm sure that by now they're on Sketchy. Um, they're pretty cool. I'm going fairly slowly here. It's 
it's already a half hour in and I'm uh, futzing with uh, Berenice's eyes. I hope you guys don't mind too much. And I'm taking my time. Okay. And again, trying to read uh, the reference photo correctly so that I, I don't uh, I don't go overboard with the dark or anything like that. Okay, I'm stopping short of the um, of the mask for now, but very soon the mask is going to determine where this skin part stops. Okay. eyelashes keep in mind that things are fairly dark inside uh, the white part of an eye <clears throat> All right, so we've got eyes. How about that? Yep. Um, Jackie, that's a good question. I think yes, because I can't help cross-hatching. Um, so I think that's that's usually my approach. Even though this is very vague right now, I've just gone like this. I'm probably going to come back, and I won't be able to help do this, you know? So I would say yes, Jackie, you can... <laughs> You can bet on on the cross hatching to uh, to become a tool here today. Yeah, if I have enough time, you guys will will see it. Okay. All right. So yeah, we're going to tackle the mask in a tiny little bit. I just want to make sure that these eyes are somewhat true to life. We've got the other one here. I might have to lower the line of the mask. I think I, I pushed it a little too high at first. Bear with me. It's just one of those things. And also, this could be... Right, okay. Because I'm in HP, it uh, it really is a light affair here. What we're doing, okay? Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I'm going to just make that line a little more straight here underneath the eye. Okay, that's more like it. <clears throat> All right, darkening here. <clears throat> I like the fact that you can really uh, go in depth in things like, you know, details on the eyes and leave everything unfinished. I think it makes for some really interesting, interesting things, right? Okay, so now, uh, lightly, ever so lightly, see, I'm, I had originally made a line for the mask and I think it's just a tiny bit too high. I'm gonna lower it by about two millimeters, it's nothing, but just so that it really follows what the the reference photo tells me. And now I'm going extremely, extremely lightly on my pencil. Okay, keep in mind that what we're drawing here 
is something that rests on the bridge of a nose, so it, it's volume, okay? And I think I've got the line of, uh, of the mask here. Okay, and it meets, on this side here, it meets the shadow of the hair. Somewhere here. Yep. Okay. Remember Jackie? I think it was you, right? You were asking, are you going to cross hatch on top? There it is. Can't help it. Can't help it. Okay. And here as well. So as I'm a little bit of dark here underneath her eyes. These folds are only going to work if we can make that contrast work. Okay. All right. Thank you, Uta, for being here. I'm so glad that you uh, that you could come even until now. Okay. Bis bald. For me, um, you know, cross-hatching obviously is a form of, of control, like it slows me down. It makes me have better control over the values, right, of, uh, over any face, any object that I'm using, that I'm drawing. So by using cross-hatching here, I really can, can bring a nice control of where the, you know, the, the mask ends. Because without having to draw a thick line here, I was able to determine where, um, where it is. Amy, it's very simple for eyebrows. Let me show you something quickly. Eyebrows are great. You can just do something like very broad, you know, something like this, which was the case. Okay, I'm just making a random uh, shape, but you get the idea, right? And then once you've got your rough shape, you can just add all the details, and for that you might want to use a darker pencil, but those, those lines are going to create the, you know, the illusion of hair as if you had drawn every single one of them, but you haven't. You know? So basically that's how, that's how it works. Uh, so don't hesitate to use two different kinds of, uh, uh, of softness, softnesses on your on your pencils for that, Amy, okay? And it's that simple, really. Okay, so remember that I made a, a line here which doesn't exist. I'll get rid of it later, but that line allows me to keep track of where that, that bridge is, okay? Yeah. All right, so this is where this main line is gonna cut through. All right, here's my first tip for, for folds, at least. Um, oh, Amy, yes. For a pen, you can do the same thing, but you're going to have to go lighter at first on your pen. Don't go like, you know, uh, full bore, you know. Um, and then you can, you can arrange, but you need to have that first layer of dark. Otherwise, you're going to spend forever on one eyebrow, and it's going to be really frustrating. Um, Margie, you are asking us who our um, reference is. Her name is Berenice in, uh, in Sketchy. Talking of Sketchy, guys, if you want to snatch any two classes these days, 
any two classes you're getting 40% off with the code SAS40. SAS40, okay? If you want. All right, so I was going to say I'm going to bring in my first tip for um, folds. Look at folds as being more angular than round. Um, even though they do create some roundness on the, on the fabric, you know, like if you look at my shirt right now, it's got some, you know, some roundness there. But really, at the end of the day, what they do, folds, is a lot of triangular shapes. And those triangular shapes have angles. And you'll see that that's what we're going to deal with when we, when we start working the folds here. Um, I'm not th quite there yet because I want to do the little stitches. Uh, there are little stitches here that are parallel to the edge of our mask. Okay, I'm going to make them better in a minute, but right now I just want to determine where that stitching is going to be. Okay. And there's also some stitching here. I might just do one instead of two. I'm not sure. But all this is parallel and follows that, that bridge, okay? Ta -da -da. It's just a little reference line. It's extremely thin, but it gives me an idea of where these, these are. Okay. Um, so as I said, we're going to, we're going to deal with angles and straight lines more than anything else. So as you start looking at your folds, look at how straight the, some of these lines are, right? And this is what you're going to try to, to convey. I also want to make sure that I've got the edge of my mask, right? It goes like this. There's a little fold right there. I'm not sure if this is right, but I think it is. Something like that. All right, this will give me an idea of where my, my folds are going to be. So as you start drawing folds, start drawing straight lines, OK? Because if you look at the original photo, that's really what they what they are. All right. This is where really the the fun of uh, of drawing begins for me is when I, I start those details. And because I'm in HB, I'm able to, to go very lightly on my, on my pencil, this graphite that I'm using. angles, straight lines, okay. Yes, Sean Michael, this is really definitely a rough, um, you know, a rough interpretation of, um, of folds. If I'm, you know, off by a millimeter or two, it's not going to, to be an issue because they are folds. So... What I want to get right is the dark, you know, basically the values, right? The tones, the difference of values between a section here, a section there of the folds. Okay. Let's 
going to be a little dark here. See how this little corner here, this silly little corner, is actually um, dark, okay? Um, no, I think uh, it's all going to be HB today, guys. It looks as though, and I might use 2B to, to do the dark around her hair, but I don't think, uh, I don't think it's going to be necessary. Because I may not have the time today to go there. So here what I'm doing is just trying to translate the right amount of dark. Uh, let's see, let's use a shortcut here. And by shortcut, I mean by putting my pencil more horizontally against the paper, I can cover more ground more quickly. I told you the eraser would uh, would come in handy. And this is definitely the case. All right, right above the stitches here, so we have these little stitches that are fairly dark. Take a look. Now I'm drawing these little black dots. But they are what is going to make this mask look pretty realistic, too. And what happens is right on top of them, there's a bit of a fold here. Alright, let me get rid of the, um, the split in the middle here, the line that I drew to remind myself that it meets there, basically. More stitches here. So now I'm going lightly. funny how these little dots are what is guiding where the, um, the dark is okay. Okay. This is where the hair is, but there's going to be some dark right up to it. We 
have about 10 minutes left, you're going to see the beginning of the work on folds. And there's a second line of dots under the stitching. Just as long as you don't make these dots on a flat line, we're, we're in good shape. <laughs> I hope you guys can see a little bit. Because it's an HB drawing, things are obviously lighter than uh, than maybe the camera would like to to have. But I hope you guys can can see, right? This is going to be all detail. Oh, I love that. And look, for instance, the dark that we have here and the dark we have here is not the same, do you agree? There's a difference of, of value there. This is making the mask stand out a little bit more against the darkness of the skin. Here too, if I were to make this just a tiny bit darker, it would just kind of pop a little more. All right, and I went with this line a little too low, so I'm going to build it a little too high. So I'm going to make it a little lower. There it is. There's that one. Okay. And it needs a corner here. Again, angles, right? What's going to happen here is right below it, by leaving a little bit of white, it's going to show the crease of that fold. It's gorgeous. Look at that. Right there in this little spot. Okay. Trying to keep up with the uh, the comments. Okay, Sean Michael, I'll check out your sketchy profile and see your uh, your masked photos. Okay, remember I told you that we go with angular uh, lines. Nothing is curved when we deal with uh, with folds really
tue. Keep in mind that if you want to uh, grab any uh, two classes at Sketchy, uh, we have 40% off any two classes that you pick with the code SAS40. Yes. See, by managing little bits like this, you're really making things look uh, 3D. All right, I have stitches on the other side. I haven't done them yet, I realize. And I'm getting close to the end of the of the live and I realize, oh, I have not done the other side of the stitches. Again, that stitching looks darker here in the dark than it does in the middle of the of the mask. Okay, and here, this spot there is really interesting because if you look closely, you will notice that the, the top of the mask uh, kind of blends with the, the skin, you know, the skin tone. It's all very, very, very light up there. So I don't want to draw a line where there is none, so I'm leaving that alone. I'll cross-hatch this a tiny bit. So this is the other set of uh, stitches on the other side, a little lighter, okay. Oh no, great, uh, no, no, Alexandria, I'm so, Alexandra, I'm sorry, I'm so glad you, you asked. So this bookshelf that you've seen week after week uh, is a bookshelf that I got uh, on, on uh, actually second hand, it was not even new when I bought it, uh, but it was a, a couple from Germany who was moving out of the US and uh, they were selling all their furniture so I got a couch from them and I got um, this shelf but this shelf is originally from Ikea and uh, they still sell it it's the model Kallax K-A-L-L-A-X and they make it in 4x4 four four. so this is actually a big uh, square-ish um, but they also have three by two, uh, two by two. I, I have several around my place. And uh, guess what it does best? It holds vinyl records really perfectly. Like they fit perfectly in those shelves. Yes, it's Ikea. Kallax, K-A-L-L-A-X. If you go on their website, they have this shelf and so many more. And uh, again, I got this for next to nothing because it was on you know, second hand. But, um, I would say it's a, it's a hundred some dollars when, when bought new, perhaps? 150? I don't know, just a, a wild guess. More stitching, you guys, look at that. And then we're going to say goodbye soon because it's one o'clock. I'm just going to go over a tiny bit because why not?
today I don't have to be at a baby shower or anything like that. Okay, see it's starting to show as a uh, as folds, but we're we're still, you know, in the early stages of things. But by doing these silly little details there, like the stitches, we're really bringing uh, the reality of the of the mask. I think. decide to do this. Again, angles, right? We are really not making round shapes. We're, um, we're doing angles. Uh, yes, B. Cohen. Will I be posting the finished portrait on Sketchy? Yes. What I think I'll do first is post it as is, basically unfinished from when I, I walk away today, which is going to be just in a couple of minutes. And then as I continue working on it, which is rare for me because usually I just walk away from something and don't, uh, you know, re-explore it later. Um, then I will continue it and post the uh, yeah, the mostly finish, finished product. Okay. Mask is hard, right? Yes, Nikira, I'm with you. I'm going very slowly. You see how this is still uh, dangerous territory for me to to do something like this. That's okay. Went a little too, too dark right here. Okay, everybody, this is really only the beginning of these folds. Um, I definitely want to go further than that and show you just how much, how straight, first of all, lines are when you, when you work on folds. You see, I'm just doing one straight line after another. Um, this is the one thing that I found about, about doing realistic uh, folds. And then there's the big one here that goes across this way. It's going to go all the way down here, right? So once you establish these very angular things, you're going to be in good shape. Okay, everybody, I am going to be uh, signing off soon. Um, yes, yeah, so Andy, thank you for saying this because you know by now that it really has nothing to do with talent. It has to do with um, taking things slowly and making things over and over, practicing. And uh, really it is gradual, extremely, extremely gradual. And just like these folds, I might come back later and make some of them darker as I, as I noticed that they... They are too light compared to other ones. It's all very gradual indeed. Okay, everybody, would it be okay to say goodbye now? We are going to continue this on our own. Um, this is just an intro to faults, but it's um, barely, you know, I'm, I'm barely just starting here, but um, I will post Hopefully, whenever I finish this, and by finishing I mean going a little further, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be super finished, but I will say goodbye for now, and uh, so appreciate that a lot of you are here today, yay! 
it's been 65 minutes of uh, of just you know meditative graphite to pa to paper um, scratches basically <laughs> So thank you, everyone, and thank you for asking some really good questions also. It's really neat. It makes this really interesting. And again, if you want to pick up two classes at Sketchy, use SAS40. You can get 40% off two, uh, two classes. There we go. We've got uh, the, the promo right there on the screen. Blanca, I can't believe you were here. Hi, Blanca. Thank you. Merci, mademoiselle. Okay, everyone. I'll see you next week. Um, it's going to be another drawing next week, but I will continue this at some point. Okay, bye everybody, au revoir everyone, au revoir tout le monde, ciao, besos, abrazos as always. <laughs> it's the highlight of my weekend too, Amy, trust me. <laughs> okay, bye everyone, ciao.